we didn't see it until we were all treading in it. The waves crashed against the rock, soaking us to the bone in a spray of salty water. This was an adventure. My parents and I were at the beach, and I was so excited to explore all the new rocks that were accessible as the sea retreated. There was one in particular, a huge boulder surrounded by shallow water around 100 feet or so into the ocean. And so, I dared my dad to come with me and go touch it. He agreed, and so we rolled up our pants and emptied our pockets before setting out across the waves. I was so close to touching it, and so I took just one more step forward, and suddenly my stomach dropped as I fell right into a two-foot-deep hidden trench surrounding the rock. And I accidentally pulled my dad in with me as well. Oops. When we finally managed to make our way out of the trench and back to our little camp, still dripping with water, my mom told us through her laughter that she had recorded the entire thing. This is one of my favorite memories, and experiences like these are the reason why I love spending time in nature during summer vacations. During a period when we were all spending a lot of our time indoors, the moments that I was able to spend outside in nature became even more cherished. Stuck in my room during online classes, unable to communicate normally with my friends, the walls felt like they were closing in on me. It was suffocating. I was literally counting down the days until summer vacation, when we would finally get to go camping and I could just soak up the great outdoors. But as school came to an end, even the smallest step outside to go check the mailbox became a huge challenge. The wildfires and the heat waves that had gripped our region were absolutely relentless. And before I knew it, the whole summer had passed me by without the opportunity to make memories with my family in nature. Even as September approached, wildfires struck again, but this time in Oregon, and my cousins were forced to evacuate their home and come stay with us. This, in particular, hit me hard, because it was a reminder of the changing times that we live in today. I've known about climate change. I've learned about it through books and lectures and videos, but it had always felt kind of distant, like a sort of looming threat on the horizon that I could acknowledge, sure, but maybe not truly understand. But suddenly, it wasn't just some abstract concept anymore. It was right there, in front of me, staring me in the face, impacting my life and the lives of the people around me. And I felt pretty powerless in the face of all that change. And that, that scared me. The climate crisis isn't a problem for the future. It's a problem for right now. It isn't just a statistic or a headline, it's a reality. We can't afford to ignore it any longer, just like we can't afford to ignore what's contributing to it. When I realized this, I decided to do some research to understand what's truly happening to the environment. And I found this really helpful pie chart of all the different factors that contribute to global warming. Most of them, I recognized there was deforestation, fossil fuels, agriculture, and the airline industry, which all made up a pretty big chunk of greenhouse gas emissions. But there was one thing in particular that really stuck out to me. Comparable to the greenhouse gas emission of the entire airline industry was technology. And I was like, hang on just a second. How come I've never heard about this before? 
I've always thought of the digital world as kind of intangible, not really connected to the physical reality that we all live in. But this all changed when I learned about the existence of the digital carbon footprint. I learned that every time I picked up my phone to go text a friend, or watched a movie online, or joined a Zoom call, I was negatively impacting the environment. When I first discovered the digital carbon footprint, I was struck with the realization that the tools that uh, I depend I on for work and for fun are contributing to the climate crisis. I needed to find some way to balance this newfound awareness with my daily use of technology. Because yeah, even I though I wanted to completely negate my digital carbon footprint, okay, it's just not feasible to cut myself off from uh, technology entirely. Like and so, I did what absolutely anybody would do when faced with such an existential crisis. I googled it. <laughs> and therein lies the perfect example of my reliability on technology. Because I use Google for absolutely everything. No, no, we can't. Not without From searching up the definition of a word to reading restaurant reviews, Google is my go-to search engine. But while I was conducting my research, I happened upon an inconvenient truth. I learned that every Google search emits a small amount of CO2 greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. I needed to find an alternative. There just had to be some option out there that allowed me to continue searching without increasing my digital carbon footprint. And that's when I stumbled upon Ecosia, spelled E-C-O-S-I-A. Ecosia is a search engine with a difference. Yeah, no, I know. Similar to its counterparts, Ecosia provides search functionality, but with a unique twist. All the ad revenue generated from searches goes towards planting trees. More specifically, one tree is planted for every 50 searches that a user conducts. At first, this kind of seemed a little too good to be true. So I dug a little bit deeper, and I found that not only does Ecosia plant trees, but they also plant the right trees in the right places, creating and replenishing diverse forests and protecting endangered animal species. Not only this, but Ecosia is also rooted in community action, and they help communities that are fighting against wildfires, just like my cousin's father. By using Ecosia for a little over two years now, I've already been able to plant more than 100 trees through my searches alone. Making the switch to Ecosia was a simple yet meaningful step towards mitigating my digital carbon footprint. All of my searches were now directly contributing to reforestation efforts across the globe. And the satisfaction of knowing that my actions have tangible consequences fuels my commitment to the cause. Recently, I witnessed a concrete example of the effect of collective action. In early 2024, Ecosia announced the impressive milestone of planting 200 million trees worldwide, or the equivalent of removing 5 million metric tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. That's more than the annual energy consumption of the entire city of Seattle. It was incredible to hear about the power of our individual choices in the face of a global threat. The small shifts to our lifestyle can become a part of a larger movement towards sustainability. By embracing different kinds of green technology like Ecosia, we can implement just a few simple changes to our habits in order to minimize our digital carbon footprints while still being able to stay connected. So the next time that you need to search something up, take just a couple of moments 
to set up Ecosia, spelled E-C-O-S-I-A, as your primary search engine. Because together, we can make a difference. Your influence and my influence is what's needed to save our beautiful planet.